Now well, we're going to resume our study of worship. And um, we've been considering the way that the Lord speaks to us in our worship. He speaks through His Word, His Word preached and taught, and He speaks to us in the various parts that we have uh, in our worship services. So we call to worship, the salutation at the beginning of worship, which we don't have, or the call to worship, the benediction, uh, the discipline, uh, and the sacraments. These are all channels through which God speaks uh, to his people in the act of worship. So as we come together to worship God, we ought to expect that we're going to hear God speaking to us. And what we want to begin considering now is the way that we respond uh, to God speaking to us. And our response is other parts of our worship which we're engaged in in this evening. That is in prayer and praise. And uh, it's hard to separate these things uh, from each other. Uh, you'll notice in many of the psalms that they are not just psalms to be sung, but that they are also prayers, uh, presenting the situation uh, before God. So uh, it's uh, mixed together. And we ought to, when we seek to worship God in our praise and in our prayers, uh, to begin, as Jesus himself taught us, to glorify God's name. And we see that that's uh, what's laid down for us uh, in Scripture. The examples that we have there of those who worship God, they begin by glorifying his name. They glorify his name for who he is. They remind himself of uh, his attributes, that he is all-powerful, ever-present, all-knowing, that he's the unchanging God, that he's the God who has committed himself to his people by the covenant that he's made. There's a continual reference to God's covenant, God's loving kindness, and God's mercy towards his people. And uh, the reason that... Uh, the saints um, begin uh, their acts of worship often in glorifying God's name is to remind themselves of who he is. Because as we remind ourselves of who God is, as we seek to worship him, it encourages our faith. It strengthens our faith. And by the time that we come to present our petitions, we've uh, reminded ourselves of how great God is. And that's what we ought to be striving to uh, do in every act of worship, to give him the glory, to uh, remind ourselves of his love and his mercy his uh, righteousness, his justice, goodness and truth. Uh, because if we remind ourselves of these things, then we will be more confident as we come to present our petitions to him. Now, every part of the worship service that's to be presented to God is uh, scriptural. Every element that we've uh, looked at is drawn from the example that we have in scripture and it's all uh, focusing on God's own word so that uh, we're worshipping the true God, that we're worshipping in, in accordance with the truth that he's revealed to us and uh, we need the Holy Spirit to uh, enable us to lift up our hearts, to worship him not just with the ritual that we're performing, but to worship him in spirit, that we uh, are 
so to speak, taken out of ourselves and uh, raised to sit in the heavenly realms where Christ is, because that's what he's uh, achieved for his people, that we are able to draw near to God, that we ascend into the spiritual realm, that we behold the glory of God. And as we behold the glory of God, we are reminded that he has made a way of approaching himself in and through his son Jesus Christ. And we ought always to remind ourselves that it's in his name and his name alone that our worship is going to be accepted. And as we remind ourselves that it's in his name, obviously we remind ourselves that we're still sinners because that's why Jesus came. That's why it has to be in his name. If we weren't sinners, we could present our worship in our own name. Our own righteousness would be uh, sufficient uh, for God to receive, but we've lost that right. But he has given us a more glorious way of access into his presence by one who can glorify him far better than we could ever glorify him. And uh, even before the fall, I doubt if Adam could glorify God anywhere near as good as the Lord Jesus Christ glorifies him on our behalf. Because he knows him intimately. He knows everything that there is to know about him. And as he lifts us up into that spiritual realm, and as he intercedes on our behalf, he's glorifying the Father for us in a way that we could never do for ourselves. And we ought to be humbled in recognition that it is in Jesus' name that we're approaching the Father. Why uh, would he have chosen us as we've been reminded in one of the prayers? We should wonder. We should always wonder at that. We should wonder amongst all the people of point tonight that we're numbered amongst those who have gathered here to worship them. Why us? Why not the rest of the people in point? What made us special? Well, it wasn't anything in us that made us special. This has been as a result of God's sovereign election of every one of us, and that ought to humble us, <coughs> because we are no more deserving than the rest of the people in point are that we should be numbered amongst those who desire to worship him as those who can come with confidence knowing that we can enter into his presence, that we can behold the glory of the living and the true God who created everything that we see all around us. And as we worship him in Jesus' name, then obviously we must seek to do so in the way that Jesus did so. Because Jesus sought to do the will of the Father. He was always focused on what the Father wanted him to do rather than what he may have chosen to do himself. And that ought to be the spirit that drives us. It's not what we want to do. It's to come asking God, show us what you want us to do and help us to pray in accordance with your will and not our will. So we're coming to be taught and he teaches us through prayer just as surely as he does through any of the other elements of worship. If we submit ourselves to the leading and to the direction that the Spirit will lead us in, we often end up in places that we had never thought of. We often find ourselves being led into truths that we had never understood until the Holy Spirit enlightens our minds according to the truths that he brings before us as we seek to draw near to God, where we get a far better understanding of him than we had prior to our beginning our 
uh, worship and our beginning of prayer. So we come seeking to be led by his own Holy Spirit who will lead us into the truth and that's why it's so important that we don't underestimate the importance of the Word of God as it's brought to us in its various uh, elements of worship uh, and that we respond uh, to God speaking to us uh, through his own word. Now, uh, obviously we want to pray in accordance with uh, the scripture and if you've studied prayers in scripture, you'll find that they're often drawing from other parts of scripture in their prayer. Now, many people find fault with those that pray and quote scripture, but it's very scriptural to do that because that's the examples that we have in scripture itself that we draw from what's already been revealed and that we seek to uh, be in that spirit and seek to ask for things that we now know are accordance uh, with God's will because he has revealed to us that this is his will it's through his word that he reveals to us his will so it's very natural for the Christian to pray in accordance with the scripture maybe not verbatim but in the same spirit with the same desire and maybe putting it into his own words but it will be the same content as is already found in the scripture because we have to pray in accordance with his will and to pray in Jesus' name and to pray in accordance with his will is more or less the same thing because Jesus is always seeking God's will and he has sent the Holy Spirit to reveal to us his uh, own will so what uh, about things that uh, haven't been recorded for us in scripture for example uh, if we pray for um, uh, practical things like uh, praying for a job is that uh, permitted, is that scriptural well I believe that it is as long as we're desiring uh, that he will hear these prayers as a result of us having sought the job or whatever it is to his own glory that we're not seeking a particular <coughs> job for our own selfish reasons to extend our own kingdom and to make ourselves rich in the things of this world but if we're deciding it uh, for the furtherance of his kingdom then it's quite legitimate for us to pray about jobs that we may be applying for because if we're deciding that it will be to his glory and obviously going to be to our own benefit and to the benefit of his kingdom then it's quite legitimate for us to pray for things of that kind what about uh, our health is it legitimate for us to pray about our health well I believe that it is because uh, from what we understand from scripture God doesn't delight in seeing anybody suffer Suffering is as a result of sin. It's part of the curse that came down upon us. Jesus came to remove the curse. So God doesn't delight in allowing his children to suffer. So it's legitimate for us to uh, ask that he would take that away or if it's an illness or whatever. As we see Jesus himself, it was his natural reaction to pray when he saw the suffering that he was going to have to suffer if it's possible let this cup pass from me but he qualified it by saying nevertheless you will be done if you've got a greater purpose in store then let that will be done and obviously he did have a greater purpose in allowing Jesus to suffer and the same for us if we are suffering if we are sick we should pray about it because God 
doesn't delight in having his children suffer. But we must be reconciled to the fact that maybe he's got a greater purpose in store in allowing his children to suffer. In the same way as Paul prayed three times for the thorn in the flesh to be taken away from him. But God had a greater purpose in allowing that thorn to stay exactly where it was. Not that he delighted to make Paul suffer, but in allowing it to stay there, Paul was going to be a better man as a result of it. So he allowed him to suffer. And that's how it is for us. But we should pray that uh, the suffering would be taken away or the illness be taken away. But if God has a greater purpose for us, to give us the grace in order to endure it. And we should always be thankful. We see that in the prayers of Scripture, in the Psalms of Scripture that are prayers. Uh, this thankfulness continually comes through. Even in the midst of the persecution that uh, God's children suffer, uh, they see that they're thankful that God is in control and that God will yet give them the victory. Now, as I've just said, God doesn't delight in seeing his children suffer. And if he doesn't take away these sufferings when we pray, we must believe that it's because he's got a greater good in store for us. But we can be assured of this that if we have prayed about it, we're going to a place where there will be no more suffering. The prayer will be heard, it will be answered. It might not be answered here, but it will be answered in the new heavens and in the new earth. For those who worship him, our prayers do not fall on deaf ears. We will have an answer to our prayers. Maybe here, but if not here, certainly in the new heavens and the new earth where there'll be no more pain, no more illness, no more death. There'll be no suffering. There'll be nothing but perfect bliss, perfect vitality of health for all of eternity. So our prayers will be heard and answered. And we should thank him for that. Now some people are able to thank him for his suffering here in this world. Personally, I can't recall that I've ever thanked God for anything that I've suffered. But I've heard of people that have and to have said that they wouldn't have changed anything because of the way that it brought them closer to God here in this world. Now, that'll be the case in heaven, but some people can experience it here and thank God for it because of the way that it drew them closer to himself. But we should always be thanking God for everything that we receive every day of our lives because we were undeserving of any of God's mercies, his temporal and his spiritual mercies. We don't deserve any of them. And we can number them every day and they go unnumbered because there is no way that we can fully understand and appreciate all the blessings that God gives us every day of our lives. Well, may God grant that he would bless to us these thoughts.